Our God is good all the time, and he wants to bless us every day of our lives. Amen. I pray that you've come here today to see and hear God. If you did, you will. So it's up to you. God is good. I'm telling you, he's good. Let's stand this morning and have prayer together. Father, we are grateful for another opportunity to come in your house. Another opportunity to worship with our, with our families. Another opportunity to see the power of Jesus Christ working in our lives. It's a good day because it's your day. And God, we just surrender ourselves to you today because we want to please you. We want to show you that we love you. And we do that by the way that we act, by the things that we do. So we commit ourselves to you and commit this service to you in faith, believing that miracles are going to happen today. All things are possible through God. So, Lord, we lift up every need and believe it's going to be met. And we're going to sing with joy. We're going to worship with joy, not because of how we feel, but because you're worth it. And we give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Everybody do this. Yep, your hands are working this morning. So listen, I was supposed to have the drummer this morning, but he couldn't make it. So all the songs I got picked up are drummer based. So guess what? You're going to be my drummers this morning. I'm going to need your help. Okay? <laughs>
to use the instruments that God gave us. Amen? Amen. We thank you for everything that you do for us without us even asking. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for blessing this offering that we're about to gain, receive. And we thank you, God, for using this offering to bless the people in our community and the people of our church. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen.
us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to give back into your house, Lord. You only require a small percentage, Lord, and that's of our time and our money, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We ask you to bless the giver as they have purposed in their heart, Lord. We ask you to multiply it for thy kingdom. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. of God because we know it's real and we know it's true we thank you for the privilege of lifting up your name and we just ask you this morning God to receive the blessings that we give you and the praise that we give you as it comes from our hearts and it's there to thank you for all you've done thank you for the wonderful songs and the music that lift us up and prepare our hearts. We pray it in Jesus. 
Jesus' name. Amen. have a couple announcements for you. Um, we have moved the graduation dinner to May the 1st. So if you have anyone that is graduating high school, four-year degree, or a master or specialist, Dana's got to have the information today. So please get with her. She's got a sheet. She needs pictures. Get with her. She'll tell you what she needs. So that'll be May the 1st. We'll be honoring our seniors. Um, tonight, we are having a social tonight. We will not be having church service in here. We will meet down at the fellowship hall. We're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and all the fixings that go with it. Um, I think they are still asking, where's Miss Rhonda, for them to bring a dessert. If you could bring, you ladies or men could bring a dessert tonight, they'll have everything else. And then also bring your kids and your grandkids because we're going to have an Easter egg hunt along with the social tonight. So that's tonight, 6 o'clock, same time, down there, bring a dessert, bring come hungry, and bring your kids and grandkids. Yes? Yes. And then don't forget, for the next two Wednesday nights, I will not have the band. So if you feel led to sing a song or to share a message, not preach, but like, you know, a poem or something like, you know, something that's on your heart that God gave you, then please let me know. Um, so that we can get those slots filled if, and if we can showcase you that would be great I think that's it all right not all right <laughs> we are having technical difficulties and it may be me I want to say that it's good to have all of you here this morning. And I want to, we're going to have a, another prayer. I want to tell you some news. God answers prayer. Amen. We have that kind of a God. And I'm thankful for that. But God answers prayer when you pray in faith, believe him. And I just want to say this morning that it's so good. This morning, they took Alex off of the vent. That's an answer to prayer. And now we have to continue to lift him up in prayer, believing that God is going to keep him strong and that they won't have to worry about it again. So don't quit praying. Pray for him and Kathy, for Megan and Heather, for God to continue to give all of them strength and to lift them up want to continue to pray for Donna Oberry that she'll recover from her surgery. Marilis is still sick. We want to pray for her. We've got some that's going to be having some tests this coming week. We want to lift them up. Darlene's mom came home. There's another answer to prayer. So we're thankful for that. So I want to lift these names up this morning and all those names that are still on our list. Uh, Christina and Cassidy had to, be, had to go to the ER this morning. Pray for them. They may still be there. Pray for them. For Shirley's son, she said he's doing better, but he still needs a lot of prayer, so keep him lifted up. I want us to lift these names and any other names. Pray for those around you because you just don't know what's going on. 
Father, we lift up every name that we've called out. We lift up every name of the ones that we're thinking of. Names on our prayer list, names on our prayer chain, and God, everybody that's here in this service this morning. Those who are watching and need a touch in their bodies, we lift them up. I thank you, God, for all you've done. I thank you for what you've done for Alex and what you're going to continue to do for him. And you're going to lift him up and you're going to strengthen him. And God, you're going to bring him home strong and he'll recover and all will be well. Bless that family. Bless the families of those who are sick and hurting because, God, they need a touch too. So we just tell you we love you and we thank you for all you've done, all you're going to do. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. This morning, I look out and I, I see people that are visiting with us, and some of you, I don't know your name, but I am so glad to have you here. If you're visiting, there are, there are visitor's cards in, in the pews there. I wish you'd fill one out, and as you go out the door this morning, there'll be uh, someone standing there, and hand, a deacon, hand them that card, and they'll get it to me, but I appreciate you being here. But I do want to say that uh, this morning, uh, Gracie has a couple of her friends here, Lex and Braxton. And they are all in a play together. And I don't know whether they came for prayer this morning or just what exactly was going on, but in, in, a, in a couple of weeks, they'll be putting a play on at the high school. I'm looking forward to it. And, and they've practiced hard and practiced long, but it's good to have you guys here with us today. And I want to say that I'm proud today to have one of my long, long, long time friends in church with us. Whit Dixon is back here. That's Johnny's father, and Whit has known me since I was a little tiny thing, and that was years ago. So it's good. Whit's been real sick, but he's recovering, and he wanted to be in church again. So Whit, thank you for being here, and we just want you to know we're praying for you, and we love you. Amen. Now, if you have your Bibles, open up to the book of Exodus. That's the second one. If you can't find... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. If you can't find it, look on the screen. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. In our reading this morning, it simply says that the path of a Christian must be a model for all people. The lost are looking for answers. So we must show them Christ. Every area of our life can be used as a witness. But, pay, but close attention is required for all of us to be successful. Those are God's words. Us as an example. And here's our prayer. Father, 
You are our shining example. If I can be like you, then I can assist someone else. I do not want anything to hinder my work for you. So help me every day to examine my heart, to stay on the course, to study and pray, and to exercise my faith, and to work with compassion. I am going to remain faithful and let others see Christ in me. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful unto God. I want to take you on a journey this morning. We know that we're leading in to Easter. And as I was preparing for today, God began to show me something that is going to take us through many years. Egypt, Israel had been hostage, slaves in the land of Egypt. They were there for over 400 years. God had told them, he said, you will not call me Lord. In other words, they wouldn't serve him. So he said, I'm going to lead you into bondage. And when I bring you out, you will call me Lord. A long time they suffered. Pharaoh enjoyed placing hardships on them. But there came a time when God said, that's enough. I'm going to set my people free. So he tells Moses what to do. There were ten plagues that God brought on the nation of Egypt. Each time, Pharaoh would say, just tell God to take the plagues away and I'll let you go. Nine times he played that game. And then he wouldn't let them go. So now God says, okay. He said, Moses, he said, I want you to tell your people to sacrifice a lamb and get me a lamb. And that lamb had to be pure and holy. Get me a lamb. If you go back and read in this chapter, it tells you exactly how to cut it, exactly what to do with it. It was amazing. And he said, then I want you to take the blood of that lamb. And I want you to put it over the post of your door leading into your house. And when I come and I, the death angel comes and I see that blood on the post, I will pass over. But if I don't see the blood, the firstborn of every family is going to die. Now, God told this to Moses to tell to the Israelites. Egypt didn't get this warning. Every house that has the blood painted on the doorpost, the death angel will pass it and nothing will happen. But if there is no blood... Death and destruction will come in the form of the firstborn dying. What a horrible thought that must have been. So listen again to the words. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plagues shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite or destroy the land of Egypt. I want you to listen to these words. He says that the blood of the lamb on the doorpost is a sign and a pledge of the faith that you have in me. The blood is a sign of the pledge that you have to me and the faith that you have in me. See, he, he said, kill a lamb, put it on the doorpost. We would say today, along with many other people, that's stupid. That's stupid. I'm God's child. I go to church. 
I do all those things. I'm a Christian. That's stupid. But what God wanted for them was a true act of faith and obedience. And if they went out and killed that lamb and took the trouble to paint it on that door, that was showing their faith and trust in God. You got to ask yourself, what is God looking for today? And he said the blood will be a sign, and it will be a token, and that token is to God. See, he said, when I see the blood, that's a token. When I see it, then I'll pass over that house because I will see your faith in me. I will see your trust in me. That's a token for me. And I'll look for it. And if I see it, you're safe. You're sound and you're secure. The death angel will not come here. He will not destroy your life. He'll pass over. He will not pass through your house. He will pass over your house. He will pass through all the houses that do not have the blood on the doorpost. But he will pass over to those who have faith. Now this is the word he gave them. He said this plague is going to be the final plague. And it's going to push them over to the point that Pharaoh says, let them go. But he said, I also know that there are some of you Israelites who are not serving me. This will be the true test. Paint the blood on your door, I'll pass over it. That is a sign of your faith in me, and you shall live and not die. Now I want you to fast forward many years later. And we come to the cross of Calvary. Jesus needed a way to redeem mankind of their sins. He said back then, paint the door and I'll pass over. Calvary had not come. The blood would cover their sins. But it wouldn't remove it. And when God's children died then, they went down into a place there in hell called paradise. And there they stayed and waited for Calvary, another type of blood. They couldn't go to heaven yet because the sacrifice had not been made. They were forced to make a sacrifice then. Now, as we fast forward there at Calvary, Jesus is not forced. He freely gave his life for me and for you. What we do is that we look at that and we talk, we call him the Lamb of God, a pure and holy lamb. Back then, they had to get a lamb that was perfect to sacrifice. When Jesus comes, he is the perfect lamb. And he is the only one that could die on Calvary for me and you. He is the only one that could shed his blood for me and you. The only one where that blood would make a difference in our lives if we were willing to do and to be what he wants us to be. His blood there at Calvary was also a sign. As the blood back then was a sign of their faith. And they're trusting God. The sign here of that blood is Jesus freely giving his life to obedience to his father. The faith in his father who said, son, go and be the savior of the world. And you will return. You will return. So that was a sign. It was a token to God. As he looked upon his son there at Calvary. And he understood that blood there at Calvary was meant not just for them there that day. It was meant for me and you today. 
and for the rest of creation, however long it exists before Jesus comes back, that blood at Calvary still works because it was given by the pure lamb. And we need to understand what Calvary is. Jesus is the Passover lamb for sure, but he is the lamb of God. And I'll tell you this, at Calvary, he was not executed. At Calvary, he was not assassinated. At Calvary, he gave his life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would trust in him and believe in him, that person would live forever and forever and not die. He said, those that, that accept the blood of Jesus Christ there at Calvary, I will pass over. Death and destruction will not come to them because they are mine. They are secure and they are safe because they're covered by the blood. It's not painted on mine and your door at our house. It is painted on the door of our heart. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for it. Now, I want you to back up in time. It was just a few days earlier they had met in the upper room. And in that upper room, Jesus tried to talk to them. He tried to tell them what was going to happen. But they didn't understand. Because he said, I must die. But they didn't believe that Jesus could die because they had seen him raise the dead. How could this man that do all the miracles that he did? How could that man die? How could somebody take his life? And he was saying, nobody can take my life. I freely give it for you. They didn't quite understand, but he tried to explain. He said, I must die, but in three days I'll live again. They didn't understand that because their mind was just confused. They were just blown away that he said, I'm going to die. And he said, I have to. I have to because I love you that much. How much would you sacrifice for your children? See, it's easy to say, isn't it? But how much would you sacrifice? What would you give for the salvation of your children? And of course we want to say everything. My life. But do you understand? The only way that you can give your life for your children so that they could live is for your life to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. When you are pure and holy, then you can give your life. And your children can see it. And it can make a difference in their life. But if you have not had that blood painted on your heart, if, not, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if your salvation is not real today, as it was the day that you first went to Him, and the day that you first offered yourself to Him, if it's not that real, then you can't give your life for your children because it's no good. Amen. Amen. We have to be ready. And to give your life for your children is for you to live a holy life every day of your life, no matter what you're doing. The thing I read said, it is my life that is pure and holy. I want to be an example for everybody to see. The best thing that I can give my girls is Jesus Christ. The best thing I can give my sons is Jesus Christ. The best thing I can give my grandchildren is Jesus Christ. Let them see in me Jesus Christ. Not just on Sundays, but every day of the week. Let them know that I love God. Let them know that God is first in my life. This heart belongs to Him. This life belongs to Him. These hands, this mouth, this eyes, they belong to God. And whatever God wants me to do, wherever He wants me to go, whatever He wants me to be, I am there for Him because I've surrendered to Him and He lives through me now and I trust Him with all my heart. He took Him in that upper room. And he thought for a moment, what can I do to make them understand? And he reached over and saw the bread and he took a piece of bread off. And he said, men, this piece of bread represents my life that was broken for you. 
You see, Jesus said to them back then, if you will paint your doorpost, I will pass over, not through. And destruction will not come on you. He said to the men there in the upper room, this piece of bread, it represents my body that was broken for you. He said, when you accept me as Lord and Savior, I will not destroy you. I will pass over you and you will live and not die. But those who will not accept it, they will die. And we know that's true. The only way we're going to make it to heaven is to serve Jesus Christ and put him first in our life. If we don't do that, we're going to die a painful death in hell. But if we surrender to him, we live forever in heaven. So he said, have the blood and I'll pass over. You won't die. You will live forever. But those who have not surrendered, those who have not given to God, they will die a horrible death. This represents my body that was broken for you. Think of the next few days what Jesus went through. And he suffered every bit of it for me and you. I ask you this morning, how thankful are you? Oh, I'm really thankful. And then we go out of here and sin. That's really being thankful, isn't it? We go out of here and do things and say things we should never do. We don't read our Bible. We don't pray. We're not a good example. We don't do those things God wants. We do what we want, but yet we say we love him and we're thankful. If you're thankful to someone for what they have done for you, you let them know it. And you look them straight in the eye and you say, I want you to know I appreciate what you do for me. I thank you for it. And then I'm not going to turn around and walk over here and start talking, ad, or start talking ugly and say nasty things about you. Because if I appreciate you, I appreciate you every day of every moment. We say we thank him for what he did at Calvary, but we don't live that. But he said to them, this is my body that was broken for you. And he was truly broken in the next few days. And then he looked over and he grabbed the cup. He said, this represents my blood, which was freely given at Calvary. No man took my life. I gave it for you. He said, now take this bread and eat it. We call it communion. Take this bread and eat it. Let this brokenness be a part of you. Let my life be a part of you. And then the blood. He handed that cup to him, and he said, now, drink. It represents, not is, it represents my blood. Drink it. And that blood went inside of them. And the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, became their companion every day of their life as long as they kept that blood of Jesus Christ real in their life. And I ask you this morning, how real is it in your life? The blood of Jesus Christ, that nothing can replace it. Nothing can take its place. The blood of Jesus Christ, oh, he gave it free the force. He died there a horrible death, but he did it because he loved me and he loved you. But there are some things we've got to know about this blood. I ask you this morning, are you saved? Are you saved? The only way you can be saved is to find an altar somewhere, bow down before God and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And I want you to come into my life. And I want it new today. What happened five years ago, what happened 20 years ago doesn't matter. Is your life real today for God? Do you love him today? Does he mean more to you than anything else today? Or is there sin in your life? Judgment is coming. And it's coming very quickly. And we could die tomorrow, today. Jesus could come today. And the answer to the question is simply, where would you go if Jesus brought, took you home today? Where would you go? Heaven or hell? And that's not something you, you just speak. It's something that you are. But there are some questions. Listen to this. Obedience is what God wants from us. A pure life. 
He wants the blood of Jesus Christ to be spread on the doorpost of our life. It's not for the world to see. It is for Jesus to see. You see, that blood on the inside, the world can't see that, but Jesus can. And that's what he's looking at. And your family must be inside. Can you imagine that night way back in, when, in Exodus, back in Moses' time, when Jesus said to them, have everybody paint the blood of the Lamb on a doorpost. And everybody that's inside that house will live. They went out and gathered their children. They said, you got to get in the house. It's night time. It's time to go to bed. Get in the house. Everybody that's in the house will live. Everybody on the ark will live. But they had to get in the house. They had to prepare the lamb. They had to paint the doorpost. See, obedience is what God wants. Me and you. Me and you. We got to bow down at an altar somewhere. We got to admit our sins. We've got to accept him as Lord and Savior. Then we've got to live it. Obedience is what God wants from every one of us. Joshua stood there. Looked at all his people. And he said, if you think it's right the way you're living, then go out and serve their gods. If you want to be a part of the world, serve their gods. Do what you want to do. Fake it. But as for me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, what, what do you say? See, I have to say, as for me and my house, well, you can't force them to serve the Lord. No, I never said I could. But they, they back when Moses said, everybody in the house, get them in the house. You see, I had to make sure that they were covered by the blood the same as I and that I gave them a chance. Get them in the house. I wanted my children to live. Get them in the house. Somewhere along the way, they have to make their own choices, but get them in the house and stand there. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. The second thing is the lamb took the blows. The lamb took the blows. That, that pure lamb back then was killed. He took the blows, but everybody inside the house was safe. The lamb of God took the blows at Calvary freely took the blows so that you and I could live. Now I want you to listen to this. You can be in a savable state or you can be saved. A savable state is one where we understand but yet we want to do it our way. But we say we're saved. We come to church. We do good things. We call ourselves in a savable state. But we're not saved. It's, you're, you're basing it on something that you go out and do. It's not your worthiness. It's not you deserving it. None of us deserve it. None of us are worthy. It's not that. It's whether or not the blood of Jesus Christ is in your heart. It's whether or not you've surrendered to him, whether or not you love him. Did you come here today to hear and see Jesus? Or did you just come to church? What did you come for? And we got to get out of that savable state. Well, I do this, and I do this, and I do this. That's a savable state. That won't take you to heaven. you got to be saved. You've got to accept Jesus Christ, and you've got to want to change. If Jesus didn't say... Listen, he says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, he didn't say, and when I see your good works, when I see you pay the, paying your tithes, when I see you in church on Sunday morning, he didn't say that. He said, when I see the blood. 
And I'll ask you again, when Jesus, right now, does it see the blood of Christ covering your heart? And you can tell me, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Knowing that it's not true. Knowing you're basing it on what you think, not on the Word of God. We will be judged by the Word of God. See, those who don't believe, they could sacrifice that lamb and eat it. There are those who don't believe that are in church this morning. It's a ritual. He said to them, kill the lamb, eat it, and put the blood on the doorpost. He says to me and you, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when we accept him, it makes all the difference in the world. We cannot believe and still do good things. And die and go to hell. We could eat the lamb. Do those things and die and go to hell. But those who believe. They know the power. Of a living God. They know the power. Too many of us are playing church. And go ahead. I've warned you. God's warned you. The Bible warns you. There will come a day when Jesus will look at you and he will not see you. He will see whether the blood is covering your heart. Go out and do your secret sins. Go play on your computer and do things you shouldn't do. Just play with coming to church. Go ahead. Feel good about it. But there's coming a day and he will look for the blood. And that day has come a whole lot sooner than what you think. Knowing is not enough. They knew they had to kill the lamb. They knew they had to prepare it a certain way. They knew they had to put blood on that doorpost. They knew that. But that wasn't going to take them to heaven just knowing it. And you and I, the same thing. We know what we have to do to be saved. We know what we have to do to go to heaven. You know that. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to confess your sins, and you have to live for him. I've told you again. That's what you got to do. But knowing that won't take you to heaven. you got to do it. And it'll be the best thing you've ever done in your life. Now, this morning in closing, I'm going to play a song for you. Debbie and him is going to play a song for you. I want you to listen very closely to it. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That is the death that has been sentenced upon man. He's going to pass over me. I'll not die, but I will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye into the glorious likeness of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen yet I love. And even though I don't see him yet, in my heart I rejoice with a joy unspeakable and full of the maximum of what God believes in what can happen to me but I know that when he appears I'm going to be like him for I'm going to see him as he is and I'm going to be conformed into his image that's taking a lot of scripture and putting it together it just simply says the best thing ever happened to me was accepting Jesus Christ living it my children are in church my grandchildren are in church they have a chance. And I want to give them the best I can give them. Is the blood good? Does the blood still work? I want you to listen. A good while back, Ricky Clark gave me an album. And I played it. And I just about wore it out. Today, I'm hearing it on the radio. There's one song on there that's the best song on there to me. And I have begun to hear it on the radio. Have you heard it, Ricky? It's amazing because they wouldn't play uh, these songs at one time. I want you to pay attention very closely to the words of this song. You got to get it from the beginning. That's a little boy talking. One dark night in each other A fearful time had come For one little Hebrew boy Who was his 
father's firstborn son. Now with the angel of death passing low, it was hard to fall asleep. But one little lamb stood in his mind as he lay his blood was on the door through the wind and the rain it still remained but he wanted to be sure so he called out to his earthly father with a trembling voice so scared and see if the blood is still there. And he said, Son, don't you worry, for the blood is there to stay.
favorite. It's an awesome song and an awesome thought. One little boy, the firstborn, and he wanted to know, Daddy, is that blood still there? Because <laughs> I don't want to die. And Daddy said, rest assured, blood's still there. Through the rain and through the storms, the blood's still there. Is it there in your heart this morning? And surely as I'm standing here, God's coming. Surely as I'm standing here, I'm going to die if he doesn't come first. And then, and Jesus said, I will look for the blood on your heart. And if it's there, I will pass over. What he means is you won't die and go to hell. He'll pass over and you'll live and go to heaven. So is it real for you today? If it's not, then today's the day. I don't care how old you are. I don't care about anything in your life. You could turn your heart over to Jesus today. You could simply say, God, come into my heart and my life. Forgive me of my sins. I've played this game too long. Too long. I want to live in heaven. I want my children to live in heaven. Forgive me. You can do it just that simple, and he will. Bow your heads this morning as we pray. I want to tell you, church, that blood still works. It's still real. It will last forever. But you may not have it in your life like you think you do or like you want other people to think you do. But he's given you today to change your life and to live for him. I just want to ask you, is there anyone in here this morning that would raise their hand and simply say, I need Jesus to come into my life. I've played this game long enough. I want my life to change. Is there anybody that would say that this morning? Father, you see every one of us. You know exactly our hearts. And it's our desire that every person in here is ready to go to heaven. Talking about it won't do it. Obedience to laws won't do it. The only thing that will do it is the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray that everyone in here is ready to go. Because we will go. God, you bless us and keep us as we leave here today. And I pray, God, for any that would be honest and sincere, they would come forward and kneel at an altar and let's pray together and make sure that everything's good. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.